Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Morning Report. My name is Willie Lawson. Thank you ever so much for spending some time with us today. You, we know that the most valuable thing that you have is time. Um, no matter what, no matter what, no matter how much money you make, uh, remember you can always make more money. You can always figure it out. But time, you can't make more, you can't make more time any more than you can make more dirt. You know what I'm saying? Uh, dirt's one of the things you can't make. And time is, is kind of like that. You can't make more time. No matter what you do, you can't make more time. So even using the phraseology, well, I have to make time for that. You can't make time for that. You have to just designate some time for it. So we really appreciate you uh, spending some time with us here on The Morning Report. Uh, the Morning Report is <clears throat> broadcast on Spreaker.com. And um, it's also rebroadcast, uh, actually live right now, on um, Fightback Media TV. Dot com, fightbackmediatv.com, because we are a production of fightbackmedia.com, fightbackmedia.com, fightbackmedia.com. Again, my name is Willie Lawson. I trust that you are well today. Um, today is going to be all Afghanistan, all Afghanistan. Uh, this is, for me, this is the first real test of the Biden administration. Um, now, I know that COVID is out there and, and, and COVID was but something, but COVID was something that was already happening. Um, this is something that, um, the Biden administration decide to go on their own with. Uh, frankly, a lot of the vaccine and, and COVID protocols were already in place by the previous administration and had been doing well. And basically the governors had taken over and and have done pr pr pretty good job. If if the job was getting the vaccines to people who wanted it, uh, you know, the, the governors have, have done a pretty doggone good job in doing that. So, but this... This Afghanistan thing is all on the administration, all on the administration, uh, because they, they decided they were not going to follow the previous administration's path in Afghanistan. They were going to go their own way. So all of this, every bit of it, is on the Biden administration, all of it. Uh, now, we're going to talk about this. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to relate some stories, and uh, we're going to sort of pick it apart a little bit. But ultimately, I want you to I want you to decide. I want you to decide: Have they done a good job, or was it such a cluster that it was never going to be? It was never going to go well. No matter no matter who, no matter what, it was never going to go well. What do you think? What do you think? Listen, thank you ever 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 so much for um, seeing some time with us. Uh, we're gonna take a little break. We'll be back with more of the program after these messages. Everybody, my name is Willie Lawson, and um, you guys know that I do a lot of stuff on the internet. And you may think, with um, what's happening on Twitter and what's happening on Facebook and what happened to Parler, that um, the mainstream uh, social media sources are really trying to rid themselves of conservative voices. And you'd be right; they most certainly are. Um, but you know what? It isn't as bad as you think it is. It's worse. But there are uh, people who are willing to be platformed for free speech. One of those, one of those places is freedomforum.website. Freedomforum.website. You can go there and speak your mind. So come join us. Enjoy the freedom. Enjoy the fun. If you are a true blue conservative, Small businesses are near and dear to your heart. 
They are the lifeblood of our life and economy. I believe this, and that's why my florist is not a website or phone number. My florist is Blooming Days Flower Shop, Tampa's premier flower shop. At 11618 North Florida Avenue here in Tampa, Florida, and at 6835 State Road 54 in Newport Ritchie. Call Christine at 813-933-1942 and at 727-232-6900. She can also be reached on the web at www.bloomingdays.com. One of the things that I get asked most is where can I get information that it's not tainted with liberal bias, especially here in the Tampa Bay area. Well, now I have the answer. dbctampa.com, a website by and for Tampa area conservatives. Tampa's leading conservative voices speak freely at tbctampa.com, and you can too. So join the fun, and enjoy the freedom at tbctampa.com. My name is Willie Lawson, and this is The Morning Report. All right, all right, welcome back. We appreciate you being back. Thank you ever so much. Um, let's, let, let's go ahead and get with it. Um, there's, always, there's also, you know, already been some, some pushback from some of the people that the Biden administration depended on to get elected. And um, if you call it that, but and and we've seen some of that pushback from um, from some media sources uh, asking asking hard questions to the point now that in the last press conference the president just walked just had just made an announcement and just walked off the platform, didn't take any questions, just walked off the platform, got his little got his little folder, and just hobbled off through the door, not taking not t- not taking any questions about this. So. That tell that tells me something. I don't know if that tells you. That tells me that they are not ready. Who's ever behind the scenes pulling, you know, pulling the strings, uh, his his folks are not ready for him to take off the cuff questions. Because they have to present what is a um, what they consider a cohesive narrative. Now the cohesive narrative could be uh, a bunch of lies tied together, but it also seems like that's exactly what's happening. Um, there's, there's an article in town hall that says the, what the, excuse me, the team Biden is saying behind closed doors is much different than what they're saying, um, t- to the public. Congressman Jim Banks, Republican from Indiana tweeted on Tuesday after attending a congressional briefing on the chaotic situation in Afghanistan, that president Biden's team has acknowledged behind closed doors that they have, that they know how bad the evacuation is going despite what the Biden administration is telling the American public. The Biden administration is telling the American public that everything is fabulous, everything's wonderful. One thing is painfully clear. The Biden administration says one thing behind closed doors, admits mistakes, knows that it's a crap show, and the president is lying and telling us something different from the White House. (laughs) It's just incredible. And this is what Banks says. Banks also says this. Let me be clear. If any American is harmed, injured, killed, and not safely evacuated out, out of Afghanistan, or if any of these weapons on this military or this military equipment is used to harm, injure, or kill an American now or at any time in the future, the blood is on Joe Biden's hands. The briefing comes as it was announced on yesterday. Yeah, 
yesterday, Biden will not be extending the presence of American troops in, in Cabal past um, August 31st. We heard what happened, right? You, you hear what happened. What happened, what ha happened was that um, the CIA director, the head, which was, who, who had more diplomatic experience than maybe somebody in the State Department? Maybe. But I, anyway, um, was sent to negotiate a, an extension with the Taliban. So first of all, problem one, we are negotiating with the Taliban. We are asking for the Taliban to give us a break. Hey man, we know you want to take over the country. We know that we've been here 20 years and we know that you hate us because we're the infidel and all that, you know, and all that stuff. Uh, listen, um, we can't really move out of this apartment on at the end of the month. Can we have an extension? <laughs> Taliban was like, uh, let me see. No. <laughs> If you don't leave, there will be consequences. Wow. What the hell does that mean? So, here he comes with his tail between his legs, the head of the CIA, the head of, of presumably uh, the, the, the best intelligence organization in the world, with his tail between his legs saying, <laughs> they, they said, no, what are we going to do? They said, no. So, Biden says, well, I guess we have to get out by the 31st. Call your cousin. Get some trucks, right? The calls to extend the evacuation mission have increased since the thousands of Americans are said to still be trapped in Kabul and able, unable to get to the airport. And the, because the Taliban is, is preventing people from reaching the airport. You remember the story earlier when, when, um, he was, when Biden was asked by the, um, the press corps, how are people getting out? You know, we, we're hearing story of people that aren't able to get out. And he was saying, well, this isn't happening because all you have to do is flash that that American passport and you have safe passage um, because that's the ten, tenuous deal that they made. Okay, here's something we learned along. We learned right after 9/11. Uh, we learned that. Excuse me. I'm, I'm I'm gonna have a little bit of this delicious water. We learned that those that are involved in jihad are okay with lying if it's in the way of Allah. They are okay with lying. So making a deal with these people, you know, getting an agreement is foolishness. It's out it is first of all, they're going to they're going to lie to you because they are involved in jihad. Jihad ne isn't necessarily isn't necessarily strapping a bomb to your butt and walking into a pizza parlor. It's anything and everything in the way of jihad. Now, I mean in, in, in the way of Allah. So that's what we're talking about here. So you know, this D, I mean, I don't know if, whether there's, whether this administration is just lying or they're really that ignorant. Are, are they really that ignorant to think that, yes, well, we, we had a deal. First of all, you're not dealing with France or, or England or Germany or hell, even China. Well, kind of like China, but uh, you, you're not dealing with Australia or New Zealand when you have a deal and you shake hands on it or you write it down on a piece of paper that everybody sort of sticks to it. That's not what we're talking about. It's, you know, it's like, it's like trying to have a deal with the Viet Cong, right? They, they, we made a deal with the, we made a deal with Charlie and Charlie's going to stick to the deal. Again, you can't either there. I just, I find it difficult to believe that, that, that they're that ignorant. Uh, they have, they have to be lying. You just have to be lying. Now, the question is why they're lying. Why are they lying? That is the real question. Why y'all lying? Anybody who's been paying attention, there's a bunch of us out here who've been paying attention, who know. Because, you know what, when this when we first got involved in this war on terror and all this stuff, you know, we, we found the ex we found the experts, people who were involved in, in military intelligence dealing with um radical Muslims or you know, radical radical Islamic organizations and we kind of found out what the deal was. Hmm. Interesting. That's why, if I can take a, 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 a brief detour here, that's why it's super important when you find videos of people who are telling the truth, do your best. Even if you have to, you know, point your phone at your, at your laptop to record and, and take and document these things. Take them off the internet. Get in possession of them yourself. Now, what I may be saying is uh, is break copyright laws, but it, but that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is it's important that we document these things. 
because we can't depend on them to, to stay up on the internet forever. You can't. So even if you have to take this and take your phone and you and record it on your phone and then put it on an SD card somewhere and keep it. Put it on an SD card. Don't don't even load it to, don't even load it to the cloud. Put it on an SD card on your phone and keep it somewhere safe. It's super important that we do that. Uh, we are really going to get into a um, uh, a class or a um, we're going to do a video on the importance of doing that because stuff's going to be disappearing off the internet. Uh, I was talking to my friend Kevin Batts, and if you haven't seen that interview, it it right now it is on YouTube. Uh, you want to check it out. It is Kevin Batts, uh, Fightback Media TV. So you want uh, on to me Red River TV. So you want to check it out on YouTube uh, because it is fire. Uh, but I have a copy of that. That isn't just up on that. That isn't just up on YouTube. Um, and what what we suggest suggest you do is. If you can't find a way to download it from YouTube somehow, because YouTube has gotten really, really sticky about that kind of stuff, and for a reason, point your phone at it, record it. Point your laptop at it or your tablet at it and record it, every single bit of it. And then put it on an SD card, put it away, take it offline, but hold on to it for sure. Document these events. Um, and document this this broadcast right here. The Pentagon and White House still have yet to give a hard number of how many Americans are still trying to leave the country. I saw a little bit of the press conference, and they just try to avoid that, like like the Matrix. You know, they try to avoid that um, because you know it's, it's a and I understand it's a situation that that's fluid, but they had a number for yesterday. Why they didn't say, well, yesterday this was the number. We don't know what the number is going to be today. Because it's a cluster, you know what? That's why. That's why. That's why. Anyway, we'll take a little break. We'll be back with, with more of the program. Uh, welcome to the Morning Report. Uh, this is Morning Report number 371. Wow. Wow, 371. And um, it is a production of fightbackmedia.com, 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 and fightbackmedia TV. Uh, so check us out. We'll be back right after these messages. Everybody. my name is Willie Lawson and um, you guys know that I do a lot of stuff on the internet and you may think with um, what's happening on Twitter and what's happening on Facebook and what happened to parlor that um, the mainstream uh, social media sources are really trying to rid themselves of conservative voices and you'd be right they most certainly are um, but you know what it isn't as bad as you think it is. It's worse. But there are uh, people who are willing to be platformed for free speech. One of those, one of those places is freedomforum.website. Freedomforum.website. You can go there and speak your mind. So come join us. Enjoy the freedom. Enjoy the fun. If you are a true blue conservative, Small businesses are near and dear to your heart. They are the lifeblood of our life and economy. I believe this, and that's why my florist is not a website 
or phone number. My florist is Blooming Days Flower Shop, Tampa's premier flower shop at 11618 North Florida Avenue here in Tampa, Florida, and at 6835 State Road 54 in Newport Ritchie. Call Christine at 813-933-1942 and at 727-232-6900. She can also be reached on the web at www.bloomingdays.com. One of the things that I get asked most is where can I get information that is not tainted with liberal bias, especially here in the Tampa Bay area? Well, now I have the answer. dbctampa.com, a website by and for Tampa area conservatives. Tampa's leading conservative voices speak freely at tbctampa.com. And you can too. So join the fun and enjoy the freedom at tbctampa.com. My name is Willie Lawson, and this is The Morning Report. All right, all right, we're back. Thanks so much. Thank you ever so much for spending time with us. Um, this is more Afghanistan, more Afghanistan, more Afghanistan. Uh, you know, it's, you know, James O'Keefe and, and Project Veritas uh, basically had a... Um, and it, found out some information of what CNN was going to re resort to once Trump was gone. And the idea was, or after COVID was over, was to start looking back towards what? Climate change, climate change, climate change. If there are, if there has been two things that the left wants to be able to grab full control over your life and the life of your, of the economy, the world economy, it's been it's, 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 it's these two things, COVID and climate change. I mean, let there be no doubt. This is truly not about health. It's not about trees. It's not about any of that stuff. It's about power. It's about control. It's about all the hyperbolic uh, phrases, tin, tin foil hat phrases that, um, that, that you can come up with. It's about one world government, it's about Illuminati, it's about all that stuff. This is from CBS News. Yes. We have Americans trapped in Afghanistan. We have chaos in Kabul. Our citizens are afraid to venture out, um, venture out to get to safety. Why? Because flipping your American passport to the Taliban only means one thing. Yeah, go ahead and get that, uh, that fan belt. And let's beat this son of a bitch. That's what it means. Because that's what's happening. And we have CBS News talking about how the real ally of the Taliban is not Joe Biden, but is, you ready? And, and, and the ally of the Taliban to go of Afghanistan is global warming. Yes. Yes. You heard me, you heard me right. Um, CBS News is saying that the real... Um, Though the real ally of the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan is actually global warming. Talk about stretching a narrative to its limit. What in the fresh hell is this? They they try they tried to scare us into cannibalizing economic growth during a hurricane season. Uh, you know they just had Hurricane Henry, which is like I don't know was like a Category Two storm or whatever it was. Um, that was supposed to, you know, supposed to, supposed to take landfall in New York or whatever, in, in Connecticut, in that area. And, uh, of course, we're supposed to all just hunker down and 
just crap can the economy because of it. Why? Why? Anyway, um, it wasn't until global warming that the strong that strong strong storms appeared. We've had st strong storms for the history of the planet. That's the planet. The planet is a living, breathing organism, and we have storms. And some some years the storms are terrible and bad and awful, and some storm and some years the storms are hardly hardly storms, right? Uh, so it's interesting that we that we weren't doing that until global warming. Then there were these wildfires spiraling out of control, uh, when all the state needed to do was simple forest management and control burns. The reason one of the reasons that we don't have the same thing they have in California is because there's a lot of forest management um, there's, and, there's a, and there's a number of controlled burns uh, especially during the rainy season a lot of controlled burns because you have to get rid of the underbrush you have to get rid of the fuel and they don't do that everywhere they don't do that in, in, in California to the same degree or, or, or to the same with the same effectiveness as they do other places so you have these out of control wildfires that te that burn out all the trees, leave the ground unprotected, then it rains and you have mudslides. It's because of bad management. It's, it's not because of global warming. It's because of bad management. Good gracious! And then idiots build these multi billion dollar mansions overlooking this cliff. Yeah, the view is beautiful, except that that when those trees burn down down this down this hill and this cliff that you live up on that's impossible to get to in your compound and the trees are gone and it, and the ground gets wet the whole thing goes sliding into the valley with a with a mighty crash so these green freaks in California didn't like um didn't like so that so mother nature has tons of tentative burn they so they don't like management so they have all this fuel and now we must tackle climate change. Otherwise, we're supporting the terrorists. Oh, Lord of mercy. What in the, what's the name of this circus again? Here it is. This is from some CBS News. Rural Afghanistan has been rocked by climate change. Rocked by climate change. Rocked by climate. Rocked by climate change. No. Um, the past three decades have brought floods and drought. Um, and that have destroyed crops and left people hungry. Now, the Taliban, with, with likely without knowing climate change was the cause, because they're all fourth century idiots, right, um, has taken advantage of that pain. Whether from drought or flood ravaged, so flood ravaged soil, farmers in the region struggle to maintain productive crops and livestock. When they cannot profitably farm, they are forced to borrow funds to survive. When Afghans can't pay off lenders, the Taliban often steps in to sow government resentment. They say stuff like, if you've lost your crop and land, or the Afghan government hasn't paid enough attention to you, then of course, the Taliban can come and exploit it. Said Camille Alam, a, non -res a non-resident senior fellow at the Atlantic Council's South, uh, uh, Council of South, South Asia Center. Uh, the Taliban has capitalized on agricultural stress and just and distrust in the government um, to recruit supporters. Alam and the group has the means to pay fighters more than five to ten dollars a day than uh, what they can make farming. So with poverty and war and everything else, climate change is the last thing on anybody's mind in Alam. Today, one third of the Afghans are, quote, in crisis or, quote, emergency levels of food insecurity. I like they love that phrase, due to drought. A danger potentially more threatening than the historic 2018 drought that left thousands dead. Rajala said that even Afghans who move into urban areas in order to leave the stress of farming behind can, can still not escape the, pressure, the pressures of people of ill repute. If you think this isn't about a, a, a transfer of wealth that continues that's all this is this is all part of it you know we were talking about you know about, about fires these people light I, I'll try to light a million fires so now the narrative is from CBS News that in order to fight terrorism we need to fight global warming 
And in order to fight global warming, you need to change your lifestyle. And we need to send billions of dollars to, wor to, to worldwide organizations that hate us. You get it? Are you starting to get it? Are you starting to get it? Are you starting to get it? Because this is what this this is what this has all been about. This is what this has always been about. This is what all of this is about. I understand. You know, it's it's frustrating. I get it. It's super frustrating. And it's scary, even. You know what's scary? The uh, the Taliban now has the U.S. The U.S. The United States left behind eighty five billion dollars worth of military equipment. Eighty five billion dollars. Rep Representative Jim Banks knows precisely how dangerous that is. In two thousand fourteen, he deployed to Afghanistan with the Navy and was assigned as a foreign military sales officer. My job was to help out on the, uh, on the front end and the back end of acquiring um, American military equipment to turn it over to the Afghans and train them on how to use it, Banks said, speaking on the steps of the U.S. Capitol uh, yesterday. So, if you can, so you can imagine how shameful I find it today that all that equipment has fallen into the hands of the Taliban. Because of the negligence of this administration and the hasty retreat that led, uh, out, they led out of Afghanistan, they have left $85 billion worth of American equipment in the hands of our enemy, the, the Taliban. 75,000 vehicles, over 2,000 planes and helicopters, over 600,000 small arms and light weapons, he continued. Stunningly, Banks said that the Taliban is now in possession of more Black Hawk, Hawk helicopters than 85% of countries in the world. While the weapons are extremely concerning, banks said the U.S. technology left behind will be devastating to the Afghan people in the hands of the Taliban. They have things like night vision goggles, they have body armor, and unbelievably, the Taliban now has biometric devices which now have the fingerprints, eye scans, and biographical information of all the Afghans who helped us and were on our side for the last 20 years. Fingerprints, eye scans, biographical information. So what's that mean? So if someone, if they come knocking on the door, come out. We sus we suspect that you are um, that you are a U.S. ally. They say no, I wasn't. They take the guy's fingerprints. They they take the eye scan. They find out he, he's on the list. He gets a bullet in the head. His family gets wiped out. Joe Biden, that's your fault. That's on this administration. Joe Biden, that's your fault. It's your fault. And if you don't believe that's going to, if you don't believe that's going to happen, uh, we're going to start seeing videos of some of the most horrific stuff that we've seen in a very, very, very long very, very long time, that we're going to ask you, everybody, to document, to take offline, put on your SD cards, hide them away, because we're going to see a lot of it. And Biden has no plans to get any of the weapons or the technology back. Again, if any of these weapons or this military equipment is used to harm, injure, or kill Americans now or at any time in the future, the blood is on Joe Biden's hands. The blood is on Joe Biden's hands. All right, now now some of you will go, well, you know, it's it's Fox News and, 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 and you other, you know, other Trump supporters who are saying that, you know, things aren't going well there. Now, the president says things are fine there. I can't imagine why you would say something different. You just You just hate Biden. Two representatives, um, Seth uh, Moulton, Democrat from Massachusetts, a Massachusetts Democrat, and Peter Major, uh, uh, a Michigan Republican, 
took a short surprise trip to Kabul, Afghanistan, yesterday to gather insight on the evacuation of Americans and allies from the region. We conducted, uh, let's see here, we conducted this visit in secret, speaking about it only after our departure to minimize the risk uh, and disruption of the people on the ground be and because we were there to gather information, not to grandstand, the lawmakers said in a joint statement. After talking with commanders on the ground and seeing the situation here, it is obvious that because we started the evacuation so late that no matter what we do, we won't get everyone out on time, even by September 11th. The two congressmen's trip to Kabul, Kabul reportedly lasted less than 24 hours and stated that, that they, well, they got some serious jet lag, uh, and stated that they occupied crew-only seats so that they would, did not reduce the number of available seats for others. Both, both are military veterans and expressed their dismay with President Joe Biden's handling of the Afghan the stand evacuation. Molson is a decorated combat veteran who served four terms in Iraq while Major was deployed to Iraq as an Army Reserve Intelligence Specialist. So, of course, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said yesterday in a letter to colleagues expressing her displeasure with the trip. Hmm. Member, member travel to Afghanistan and the surrounding countries would unnecessarily divert needed resources from the priority mission in safely and expeditiously evacuating American Afghans um, at risk of from Afghanistan, she said. Well, these people already handle it. These guys knew what the hell they were doing. Ensuring the safe and timely evacuation of individuals at risk requires the full focus and attention of the U.S. military and the diplomatic teams on the ground. She continued, members traveled to Afghanistan and surrounding countries would unnecessarily divert needed resources from the priority mission. Whatever. Whatever. Shut up, Nancy. Sit down. Unnamed officials at the Pentagon and State Department were also opposed to the congressman heading to Afghanistan, according to the Washington Post. Um, someone said it, it's as moronic as it is selfish, a senior administration official told the Post. They're taking seats away from Americans at and at-risk Af Afghans, which they just said they didn't do, while putting our diplomats and service members at greater risk. How? So they can have a moment in front of the cameras. But they didn't have a moment in front of the cameras until they got back. Nobody knew, nobody knew they were gone. And they didn't break a quorum like the idiots from, from Texas, right? It's only one, it's one of the most irresponsible things I've ever heard a lawmaker do, one diplomat told the paper. It absolutely deserves admonishment. Yeah, whatever. They didn't want anybody to know what the hell was going on there. They wanted to be able, like I said a minute ago, to control the narrative, to have a cogent, uh, consistent narrative. Even if that narrative was put together with, with, um, chewing gum, bailing wire, and a pack of lies as thick as the day is long. That's what they didn't want. They got embarrassed. They got embarrassed from a bipartisan source. They got embarrassed by two members of Congress who knew what they were looking at. They got embarrassed by two members of Congress who knew what they were looking at. So what do you think the Biden administration's first test is? Well, what's their grade? One to 100. No negative numbers. One to 100. What do you think? I know what I think. I think it's time to go. I think it's time to get out of here and make room for somebody else. So until we see you again, go out there and learn something. Love somebody. And for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. We will see you when we see you. Bye-bye now.